Hello, everyone, and welcome to Movement and Science. I am Kendra Pena Colazzo, and I'm so excited that you clicked on this video because we are launching our new channel. So excited. So today I'm going to talk about some basic things, where to go from here. If you're just getting started in any type of behavioral change, what is behavioral change? Behavioral change is a systematic approach to changing behaviors or choices that one makes. Our brains are not unique in that the way we think is completely different than somebody else um, or the way we behave is completely different from somebody else. Our bodies are the same way. Our bodies primarily work the same as the person next door um, in, in, the, in the broader sense, of course. So when we work out, we work out in very similar ways. The brain is the same in that our thought processes and our patterns can yield similar results and is uh, predictable. So science has come up with a way of, of looking at these, researching these things, and figuring out, well, okay, if we want to change people's behaviors, um, how can we support that and how can we educate the population to do that? And the way we need to go about that is to understand that will is not enough. Your will is great, but it's not going to be enough to actually give you a lifestyle or a behavioral change. For example, many smokers, and you probably know a smoker that has tried to quit several times going cold turkey using just their will, and they're not successful. So we need to implement strategies, techniques, plans, so that when they try to quit, it's actually more, more successful um, and it'll work. How do you become successful? You have to have a plan. So setting up SMART goals is crucial, whether you're, you're doing it mentally or you're doing it on paper. You have to have these goals set in mind. So SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. All right, so it gives you um, an opportunity to assess where it is that you want to go and a plan to take to get there. Without that plan, there's nothing to hold you accountable and there's nothing to guide you. So if you wake up one day and you say, you know what, I'm going to be a doctor. Okay, there's steps that you have to take to become a physician. You have to go to school. It's not something that you can just wake up and say, all right, I got this, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Um, I have the piece of paper that says that I've, I've qualified and my credentials are all set and ready to go. You have to actually take the time. There's a plan in place. You have to get your degrees, you have to do residency, and it has to happen in, in a linear pattern. And that's kind of the thought process with setting any type of goal for yourself. There's uh, steps that you need to take to do that. So if you're looking at um, quitting smoking or if you're looking at maybe running a marathon for the first time, you got to come up with that plan so that you can be successful. Okay, another really important thing that I want to talk to you about is being mindful. All right, Set a timer for five minutes. Give yourself some time to regroup, reset, restart. And you can go through this with journaling techniques, meditation, prayer, reflection, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to name it, give yourself that five minutes. Please don't start thinking that it has to be something that has to be 60 minutes and it has to be a long time because you're going to get um, discouraged if you can't hit that mark. So just the little goals, we're taking it step by step. Once you've completed those five minutes, if you say, man, I, this was great, this is actually really useful, I need some more time, then go ahead and add time. That's fine, that's wonderful, but please just don't start out with this huge, huge goal. Um, you wanna break it down into little bits and then add on as you progress and as you, you kind of go forward. Okay. My next one is watch what you think. It takes time to, to not just master, but just to get the hang of it. Every negative thought that comes into your head 
Stop and ask yourself, does this thought serve me? And is this even really true, right? So you're going to get away with things that you say to yourself that you would never let anybody else do that to you, right? I've done that, I, I, I still do that. So if you drop something or if you forget something, you're like, God, I'm so stupid, I can't believe I did that. That was the dumb thing that I did. That is not going to serve you. Even something that's, oh, well, I'm not gonna interview for that job because I'm not qualified. Watch the thoughts that you're having because those negative thoughts can start to spiral and it can have a negative impact on your, basically your, your lifestyle and the choices that you make. Think about if you're beating yourself up for the things that you should do, okay? So I want you to start looking at loving the things and celebrating the things that you are doing. I have clients that say to me all the time, I should be eating better, I should be stretching more, I should be cleaning my house more, I shouldn't be smoking, I should eat more veggies. Listen to that thought pattern. How are you going to feel the remote, like, littlest sense of success if you're constantly telling yourself, oh, I should, I should, I should, I should, I should, and I don't, so therefore I'm a failure. That's the thought process. So start celebrating the things that you've done and the things that you can feel successful about. So if you are starting to work out, understand where you are right now. Not where you were five months ago, if this is your, you're getting off the couch and you're just starting, or if you were a former athlete and you may have had um, a physical or a mental illness, maybe you've had kids, you changed schools, you changed a job, you moved, those are obstacles that we have to overcome and they're a natural part of the process. So our fitness journey and our wellness journey is not linear. There's going to be some spirals, there's going to be some ups and downs and we got to go with the flow and celebrate where we are and the successes that we have at that time. So celebrate when you actually get up and you do something and that could be absolutely anything. Um, the choice shouldn't be I either go to the gym for 60 minutes or I do nothing at all, right? There's that huge spectrum that we can play with. So find something that works for you that day and celebrate that day because maybe tomorrow you will feel like an all-star and maybe yesterday you felt like an all-star and, and today you just want to take a little bit of a break. That's okay. All right. My final thought, love yourself and cut yourself some slack, please. All right, if you are a super fit gym goer, that's great. This message really isn't for you. Who I'm really speaking to right now is those that beat themselves up every day. Maybe the people that were super active came up and faced an obstacle and are having a hard time getting back on the train, all right? so. It's frustrating. I understand that. I go through this myself. These are all the things that I tell myself on, on a regular basis. So if you're used to doing, you know, 30 push-ups without breaking a sweat and now you've, you've had all of these changes and you're down on your knees again and you're, you're you know, you're doing modified push-ups, that's okay. We all have setbacks. It is a part of the process. But work through that and celebrate the successes that you've had. Okay. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments below. I would love to answer some of them. If you want to message me, that's great. You can do that too. If this um, resonated with you and you got something from it, please share it with a friend. And like and subscribe. This is my first video, so I don't know where the links are right now. But I hope this worked for you. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Go after it. Love yourself because you are a rock star. See you soon.